Hi there, and welcome back to Security Skills. Now, we're here in the City of London Police Station with Sergeant Fran, and this video is all about weapons. We'll be discussing common types of weapons you may come across in security, where they may be hidden, and most importantly, what you should do if you find someone with a weapon. So what are the most common weapons that a security professional may face during a shift? Well, so we'll get to them in a minute, but the most common is probably going to be knives. Um, but we're also, you'd be looking at any implements that somebody's bring, brought with them in order to cause harm to somebody else. So we have here a baseball bat. So this would be quite obvious if somebody approached the door and tried yeah. to come, come in with it, although that's not to say it's impossible to conceal because you could put it down your trouser leg if you were so inclined, but it would be very obvious. But let's say that somebody's had a remonstration in a club, they've left go back to their car or nearby and then they could return with something like this and then with the intent to finish off whatever has started inside. And if someone does approach the door with a baseball bat, yep. what do you do? Call 999. So yep. Manage the situation as safely as you can, use distance, it's your friend, and call the police will come and deal with this. Yeah, yep. so get us far away back. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Nice. And then what is what is this thing here? Uh, so this this is a meat hook, but this goes for anything, any sort of metal implement. So we have seen before people with tire irons and crowbars. So again, not necessarily trying to bring into the premises, but they may return to finish off something that had started indoors or with the intention of causing harm to somebody that they know is in or in the vicinity of yeah. the venue. And these all have been confiscated. So it yep. is a possibility, someone might be thinking a meat hook, not going to yeah, come across no, it. Yeah, it's happened. That's why it's here, yep. Okay, so let's move on to the pool cues, because I suppose with the baseball bat and the pool cue, there could be legitimate reasons for someone carrying these. Yes, and it's all about your intent at the time. So what changes when something becomes an innocuous implement is what your intention is. So an offensive weapon is made, adapted or intended to cause somebody injury. The made ones are obvious that, that their intention is to cause harm. Something that's been adapted is something that's been changed in some way. So this pool cue has been changed, it's now in a single piece, so it's not being used as it was in, as it was um, created to. Yeah, so if it had its other Yeah, if it's got its other parts it, and it's yeah. in a case, then you'll, off you go to your your pool championship, whatever you're doing. But if you've got a single piece of it, you're not out to play pool. The likelihood is that they're going to use that to cause harm. And then um, it's somebody's intention when they've got that item. So if you've got a baseball bat with you, you're on your way to softball practice, that's fine. But if you brought it with you to a nightclub, following a remonstration with somebody indoors, your intention is wholly different. And that's where things change with the item's intention. Nice one. Okay, let's move on to the more scarier ones, I suppose. Mm. Um, so, yes, bladed weapons, knives, and, um, and other sorts of offensive weapons, really. Um, so common things that people people may bring out with them, kitchen knives. So this is a, a large kitchen knife. Every home has one, a smaller one, which is slightly more portable. These you may encounter tucked in people's waistbands, uh, and down in boots, and so on. So there's a, obviously a risk of injury to themselves, um, but you need to be careful if you uh, encounter somebody who's searching somebody who's got a bladed weapon. Yeah, and I presume call the police straight away if you come across Absolutely. anyone with a bladed yep. object. Yeah, with a bladed weapon, absolutely. Um, not, the in, intention may be for just for self-protection, such as the case with many young people. Um, but if, you, if you've got a knife like this kitchen knife tucked in the back of your trousers, it's a bit different. It's ready accessible as opposed to something folding like this that you could have in your pocket or your, or your bag. Is there anything security professionals can look out for in trying to find these things? I mean, obviously they can be small, yeah, the, um, the the waistband is, is always worth a, a good check uh, just to make sure that there's nothing protruding from, from around the waistband and that's where most things are carried. Um, and it, a person can alter the way that they move their gait if they've got something um, down their trousers because you've got things down there that you want to protect. Yeah, especially uh, the, the bigger ones yes. and the baseball bat and things, I'm guessing yeah. they have it. Yeah, absolutely. Down so tuck down the leg or perhaps behind and then that will, will change how somebody moves. So if you can see somebody moving through a queue of customers and they're walking a bit strange, it's worth a second look if they keep adjusting something, then there's your clue that there might be something there. Yeah. And with these, especially with the portable knives, what kind of sentence is someone looking at? If, if you, you a custodial sentence, if you're found with a weapon, it will be at least six months, up to four years. Um, but depending on what you do with it, obviously that can increase. 
Okay, so especially with these foldable knives, there's a bit of discrepancy between what people can legally carry and what they can't. I think the maximum length is three inches, right? Yep, you can carry a folding pocket knife where the blade is less than three inches. However, if that blade locks, it becomes illegal. So yep. no matter how long that blade is, if it locks in place. So if you think of a Swiss Army knife, you open it, you use it, you close it, there's no mechanism to prevent it from folding. Um, these, for example, up here are both locking knives. You can see when the blade is extended, nothing I can do will cause it to fold down until I use the, the clip push it down and then it will fold away. And the same with this one, it looks like an outdoors, sort of, you could talk like, I don't know, with a hunting knife or a hunter gathering knife. Okay, so it's got a short blade. However, it is locked in place and it will not collapse until you use this mechanism here to fold it. So both of those um, are illegal by the virtue of the fact that they lock. And now if a security professional is searching someone, say yep. at the doors or something like that, and they do come across a knife, they find it, it's tucked into someone's waistband, mm -hmm. How would they dispose of it? So obviously they don't want too much fingerprints and that kind of things on it. No, you should safely recover it in the safest way that you can. Um, you, if you encounter resistance from that person, you have you have to think of your own safety because these weapons could clearly be used to cause you some damage. Um, but again, safe handling practices. So if you're not wearing gloves, it may be sensible to put a pair of gloves on and put it in a sterile um, envelope or um, a plastic bag until the police can come and collect it. Yeah, I think the main thing you've touched on there as well is consider your own safety. Absolutely. I mean, if someone's coming at you with these yep. swords, as they are really, your own sit, put your own safety first. Yeah, absolutely. And call the police. We'll come and deal with this quite happily. We've got teams of people who are very good at dealing with these. But they're, um, yeah, they're pretty unpleasant. You may find them. People carry them for show, but that doesn't mean that they um, won't use them. Yeah. Now, it's probably quite rare in the UK, but it is possible for security to come across firearms if someone is yes. trying to get in someone with a firearm. What should they do? Everything is about safety with a firearm. You don't know if it's real until proven otherwise. They look very convincing. Assume even in it's replica. real. Always assume it is real. Um, safety first, distance is your friend and call for help from the police or send armed units to deal with that threat. Okay, so we've taken a look at these ones that lock, these small ones. But over here we've got, well, pretty much swords, don't we? Yes, these are huge. So this is a, a machete. Um, these are obviously highly illegal, um, but we do come across them occasionally. So this one is sheathed, um, so can be attached to a belt, can be worn uh, outside of the trousers, yeah. or you can tuck it on the inside. And this somebody would uh, not perhaps routinely carry it around with them, but if they were intent on committing an offence, they would bring it with them. And with this, that's just instant jail time. Yeah, I think you'd be you'd be pretty lucky to avoid going to jail if you got caught with that in a public place, yep. Yeah, and with the likes of the baseball bat and the pool cue, there can be some reasonable justification for carrying that. But with this, no, no way. Absolutely There's not. No it's, only, it's only purpose is to hurt somebody. You're not a farmer in a field. Um, you're carrying this in a town centre street. You're, well, you've only got one thing in mind, haven't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. and over here we've got... Um, what do you refer this to as a, a zombie call, knife? I would call this a zombie knife. It has got no legitimate purpose other than to frighten people and cause horrendous injury, frankly. Yeah. So these are, they became trendy in recent years, but um, yeah, very illegal, illegal to produce, illegal to sell, illegal to possess. Yeah, and we've got these two other knives here, which are still in the evidence bags. Yep. Um, we can't get those out because they are actually still going through an investigation, right? Yeah, they're, like, they're part of live investigations, but it does show that, um, that people are still actively carrying knives. This one's a, it's like a carpet fitter's knife, so it's a, another tool that could have a legitimate purpose. But uh, bringing this when you go home to a nightclub or a bar um, is unacceptable. No. Okay, Sergeant, um, thank you very much. I mean, it's pretty scary stuff seeing it all laid down in front of you. Mm. Um, but basically, so if you are working in the security industry and you come across anybody with any of these weapons, call the police. Call the police immediately and always put your own safety first. Um, if you need to get out of there, get out of there. Um, Absolutely. So thank you very much. Um, and that's all for today. Um, I hope you guys have found this as interesting as I have. Um, so it's been absolutely nuts seeing all these laid in front of us. Uh, if you do have any more questions about weapons and what you should do if you do come across one as a security professional, we'll put some handy links in the comment section. But yeah, that's all from us. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.